Hello my beauties, welcome back to Glow Up with Shelly. Today I'm going to be talking about a viral product that all of you are probably like, why isn't she talking about this? <clears throat> I have you covered because today we're gonna be talking about the Ordinary's 15% EGF Serum. This is a plant-based epidermal growth factor and it's made for anti-aging. But I bet you're asking, is it worth the hype? Hmm, I don't know. Is it safe? But what about all that talk about cancer? Today, I'm going to talk about the ingredients. I'm going to talk about the cancer risk. I am going to discuss what this can do for you. And I'm gonna talk about what makes this stand out. So. Let's get into this. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and hit that like button and make sure to subscribe while you're at it. You'll want to know when I post new content. Okay, so let's talk ingredients because I have the new Ordinaries EGF Serum right here with me today. And I am so excited to be trying this serum. I will also do a video on my 30 day review, but this is just kind of a, what is this serum really about and should we be using it? Okay, so ingredient breakdown. Well, three key growth factors. And the first one is that famous SH oligopeptide one right? That's the one that mimics the human growth factor and is designed to stimulate collagen. And the second one that it has is SH polypeptide 76. And that really helps with the skin density, firmness, and elasticity. And the third one is SH oligopeptide 2. And that one really helps to reduce any chances of scarring as well as boosting collagen production in the skin. So it's got three pretty powerful peptides in this little bottle. And as we can see, the bottle is dark and it's designed to keep light out, right? Because the way this formula is designed is to make sure that you get those peptides on your skin in their most natural state. So some of the supporting ingredients in this serum are also glycerin, which helps to hydrate the skin as well as act as a preservative, a natural preservative. So there's some great ingredients in this serum. But what do the studies say about this serum? Well, in 2023, there was a meta-analysis in the Journal, Journal of Dermatology, and it showed that it studied 13 patients using plant-based growth factors, not the ordinary specifically, but other plant-based growth factors. And it's on, on average, 46% of the participants saw a reduction of deep wrinkles within the first 90 days and versus only 28% with a placebo. So we can see that there is a statistical significance with adding the growth factors. And they saw that the EGF and collagen synthesis in the skin had shot up by 42%. So it did see a statistical significance in collagen and elastin production in this study as well. And that was done with skin biopsies. In 2021, there was another study in the Dermatological Surgery Journal, and it had 60 participants who were on EGF-based serum for 12 weeks, a uh, plant-based EGF serum, I'm sorry, for 12 weeks. 31% saw an increase I saw a decrease in their epidermal, transepidermal water loss, and that was compared to the placebo group, which saw a 27% increase. So just a slight increase, not a huge increase in that, but enough to see that it does enhance the skin barrier as well. Um, and then in 2022, there was a study in the clinical cosmetology cosmetic and investigative uh, dermatology journal and it compared plant derived EGF serums to retinol in 40 patients with sensitive skin and what it saw was that there was a large wrinkle reduction in the plant-based EGF serum with no irritation versus 35% of participants having irritation with retinol. So it was a really good, it showed that it, it was a little bit gentler but it had 
similar results. Let's get to the cancer risk, guys, because I know, right, we know that this is gonna help reduce our wrinkles, it's gonna help with fine lines, it's gonna help boost our collagen levels, it's gonna help with uh, elastin synthesis, right? So it's gonna make our skin firmer, it's gonna make it bouncier, right? All of those things that we want, but there's been a lot of talk of cancer. And I really want to take a pause and discuss this because I'm in a lot of skincare groups online. And so I just like, reading and seeing like what's out there, what people are saying. I also get on Reddit. I look at what people are saying on Reddit about some of the new skincare um, ingredients that are coming out. And what I've seen a lot of talk about is cancer and proliferation, cell proliferation in general, right? Because the idea is that epidermal growth factors increase cell proliferation. And that basically means it just increases the rate at which our cells produce, right? And regenerate, okay? That also has led some people to think, well, what about cancer? So if you have a tumor cell or a malignant cell in your body, won't that reproduce rapidly too? Well, in theory, yeah it would. I want to say this is a valid concern, I should say. It's a valid concern. Let me just tell you what the studies say. So in 2023, there was a meta-analysis in the Journal of American Academy of Dermatology, and what they found is that there were no cases, can I say that again, no cases in the 1,172 patients using topical EGF for 6 to 24 months. And that is topical EGF. That's not even plant-derived topical EGF. That's just topical EGFs, period. So the way they do meta-analyses, if you know anything about scientific literature, right, they're looking at multitudes of studies. So in all of the studies they pulled where patients were using this long-term, out of 1,172 patients, not a single one developed a malignant cancer okay, or malignancy in general. That's what one study says. What about other studies? Are there any other studies? Well, in 2024, there was a Norwegian study in the British Journal of Dermatology, and it actually tracked 100,000 women. 100,000 women. 106,978 to be exact. And they found no association between skincare products containing EGF and breast or endometrial cancer. So generally, basically they, they followed these women and when they came down with cancer, they looked to see what have they been using, right? There were no, there were no causal relationships. I mean, they could not say, oh, these EGF women developed a lot of cancers. Okay, so they could tell just by that large group of women, that 106,978 women, right, that did, that ended up developing cancer over that 10 years, none of them they could ever relate back to EGF. And then, of course, I know you're not fine with just two studies, so let's give you three. In preclinical safety studies on the Ordinary's EGF. In the study, they showed no mitogenic activity on human keratinocytes in vitro. Okay, so this was in a Petri dish and they probably put EGF on it, right, on human keratinocytes and there was no mitogenic activity, meaning there was no enhanced cellular division in that little specimen that they did. Well. And, and, and this is good, right? Because we know that when we zap it with UVB radiation, y'all know what happens, right, to those keratinocytes. There's definitely some mitogenic activity going on, right? Essentially, though, what that's saying is EGF alone doesn't seem to activate that mitogenic activity. Okay, so now that we've seen the studies on cancer and I've calmed your fears on that, the plant-based EGFs really are bioengineered to lack receptor binding domains that could domains that could overstimulate your cells. Essentially an additional division. It doesn't contain those things that will bind to your receptors that cause extra division of the cells. So with plant-based derivatives, it's actually a little bit safer, even in theory, right? 
than your human or embryo based EGFs. Another thing is that they degrade faster in the skin than human derived EGFs. So when you put them onto your skin, they are going to sink in of course, but they're gonna degrade much quicker than a human based EGF does, okay? So that is why plant-based EGF is really great. And you guys know that I have used BioEffect for a while now. I really enjoy that EGF serum. It is very pricey though. Um, at $150 a pop, a bottle, that's basically not even as big as this bottle. Mm -mm. I think the plant-based EGF by Bio um, Effect is a hundred. It's one hundred fifty dollars, but it's like maybe half of the size of this bottle, so it's very little serum. And this bottle of EGF serum from the Ordinary cost me fifteen dollars and fifty cents. Okay, so that's it. It's a fifteen dollar serum. This is probably one of the cheapest EGF serums on the market. I don't think I've seen another one at this price point at all. I think the next one is like thirty dollars, and y'all know I tried a bunch, and they did not like a lot of the ones I tried didn't work that that were low priced. Bio Effect, I saw changes in my skin. Skin Authority, I saw changes in my skin. Surprisingly, the Skin Medica TNS, I did not see changes in my skin, but bio effect is plant-based skin authority is not it's human based it's uh embryonic based basically so that being said i can't say that it's because one's plant-based versus another one i can tell you that those two did work really well for me now i was not a fan of the tns serum i tried that last year i got it i think i got it last february and i used I used it within like maybe six months because I only used it when I was needling medically and cosmetically and I was so unhappy with that serum. So unhappy. For one, it was the most expensive. I think it was like $400, which is ungodly. <laughs> um, a lot of money, right? And then on top of it, $400 and it didn't do anything. So this is only $15, right? You can try this. You can give this a try. Try it for 30 days. It's not gonna break your bank. I didn't wanna stop there though, right? I could tell you all about this serum, but I wanna tell you about some of the things I found in relation to microneedling, cosmetic needling, and using plant-based growth factors. So let's discuss how plant-based growth factors can really support your microneedling and your cosmetic needling. Um, because that's how I'm using it too. So I'm actually using it daily but I'm also, I'm making sure to use it when I'm cosmetic needling and when I'm medically microneedling. Basically use this when you're cosmetically needling and when you're microneedling. The results from what they've seen in some of the studies with plant-based EGF serums and microneedling is shown a 62% increase in, or 62% improvement, I should say, in acne scarring. And that is a huge jump from the 41% improvement that they saw from just microneedling alone. So growth factors actually do enhance the microneedling process. And histologically, that showed 2.3% 2.3 times I should say thicker epidermis than without the EGF serum so that is big right because that says that when you're using EGF serum you're boosting your the effects of your micro needling when you needle at depths of 0.2 to 0.5 so that would be almost cosmetic depth. When you get to 0.5 millimeter though, you're getting to medical depth. So if you're doing anything over probably 0.335, you're gonna get toward that medical, right? Once you get to that 0.5, you're at medical microneedling depth. Face your treatments out properly, okay? That's, that's basically what I'm saying. Just make sure I have tons of videos on how to space your treatments, on how to space medical microneedling, how to how to space your cosmetic microneedling. Don't forget to pay attention to those videos because I don't want you to be clouded by this video and then go out and medically microneedle, you know, four times a week, four times a month, because that's, that's not what I want you to do <laughs> at all. Okay, so let's just get into what the depths 
that they showed. So in depths of 0.2 millimeters to 0.5 millimeters, it delivers that EGF to the epidermis and the superficial dermis. That is a very low absorption. Okay, so you're not gonna have a high absorption. It's only gonna get to the ep epidermis at those cosmetic needling and then maybe just the surface of the dermis. And then when you go lower than 0.5 to 0.75, one millimeter or above, you're going to get the EGF to your vascularized dermis. Now remember, okay, that can, you know, increase your possibility of having more cell proliferation as well. So people do get concerned with needling EGF deep, but Again, I'm saying that plant-based EGF, I don't think you really have to worry about. But if you aren't going to, if you're going to still worry about cancer, keep it at a lower depth then. Okay, just do it cosmetically and just do it to that 0.5 and it's not gonna reach those lower layers of the dermis, that vasculized area, that means you have blood flow to it. But avoiding that vascular, that heavily vascularized area will also help you know, mitigate your cancer risk. That is it, right? you know that when you cosmetically needle and when you medically microneedle, this stuff is going to start to sink into your skin a lot more. Keep that in mind. Again, I don't think there's a risk. I think this, this um, serum is amazing. So it is bioengineered with plant growth factors to safely reduce wrinkles, to improve your skin texture, to improve elasticity, and to improve um, firmness in the skin. And if you look at the Ordinary's website, they do tell you that people are seeing results within two to four weeks of using this product and that it does increase hydration, it increases um, elasticity and firmness, um, tightness of the skin, it um, reduces wrinkles and fine lines and helps improve the tone and texture of the skin as well. So I am super pumped to be using this and to share my results with you. There you have it, the Ordinary's 15% EGF serum. It's got a lot of wonderful stuff in this serum, guys, and you just need to try this. For $15, you can't go wrong. Remember to drop your microneedling questions below. Hit like, hit subscribe if you wanna support this channel. Guys, I love making this content. It is hard with a full-time job. So all the support you can give, I really do greatly, greatly appreciate it. Click on my links if you wanna support the channel and I'll see you next time on Globe with Shelly.